Between thirty and thirty-five, a whole lot of people have died. Just look back and see in the history, so many well-known yogis all left their bodies at that time because they burnt up everything and they had no business with the world, so they left. If you run out of software, even if your hardware is good, you ran out of software, this is becomes nothing. So it is important that we are aimed towards the sanchita or the warehouse, not just the prarabdha. So now you're confused, you think Sadhguru ditched you or you're suddenly this process is not working, you must go somewhere else and learn something else. You idiot, it's working. Essentially, naturally, if death happens, why death is happening is because these life energies are programmed in a certain way. There are different dimensions of karma. One that you are in touch with right now is referred to as prarabdha. This is a certain software. So, a certain amount of prarabdha is there within you. So life process is working it out. If life has to be embodied, it must be in a certain level of intensity, a certain range of intensity, a certain band of like certain frequency, it must be there. If it becomes too intense and goes above, it will leave the body. Then we say, he attained samadhi because life energies became too intense that the physical body cannot contain it anymore. Or if it becomes feeble beneath a certain point, then it will slip out. This is called dying naturally out of old age. People just lie down, close their eyes and… People died of old age, nothing broke. Nothing broke, his liver didn't go wrong, his kidneys didn't go wrong, his heart didn't go wrong, simply life became feeble and slipped out. That means he lived his full term. Whatever this particular life was programmed for, it saw its full course, so it leaves. But very few rare human beings leave because of excessive intensity, a few, a certain number leave because of old age. Most of the others die because something broke. Either you crashed your car or you smoked yourself to death or you drank yourself to death or something else broke, you worked yourself to death, whatever. In some way, you made the physical body inhospitable for life. Something went wrong in this mechanism, now it cannot host a life, so life leaves. But still it is in a certain level of intensity that it could have continued to embody for a much longer period. When life leaves like this, then it cannot find another body immediately, it has to hang. Let's say, no, I don't want to take you or your mother as example. Let us say somebody had, by normal course he would have died after ten years. But today because of excessive work or stress or whatever, his heart broke and he died today. Ten more years were there for him approximately. This all depends how he lives. This ten years, if he lives in a certain way, it could be worked out in two years or it could be worked out in twenty years, it de depends on various things. But let us assume there were ten years approximate life. But he left the body, because he's left the body, because he's lost the discriminatory mind, because he's lost the ability to perform any kind of karma as such, because of this, these ten years, maybe hundred years without the body, with the body, with a discriminatory mind, this would have been over in ten years. But without the body, without a discriminatory mind, this may take hundred years or five hundred years, we do not know. 
It depends on various things. Depending upon the karmic substance, what kind of karmic substance he carries. Knowing these things, because most people die of infections and diseases and ailments and things, so we created a whole science as to how to help them beyond their body. We could not help them when they were in the body because we couldn't figure out what is the ailment, what is the disease, now he did not get the treatment, something happened, he died. Now we want to help him in such a way that he dissolves this quick, that he doesn't hang around for too long. So there is a whole science behind that. So this man for whom you gave the cow money, you are giving him because his great-great super-great-grandfather knew what to do. So you are still paying him for that knowledge that the super-grandfather knew. But this fool also should have learnt. But somewhere it all got dislocated. Now it's just become a plain ritual that he's learnt a few mantras and you don't know what it is to check. He, he could be abusing you in Sanskrit. <laughs> As you felt terrible about him, he must have looked at you and he was abusing you in Sanskrit language. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Probably you were cursing him and he was cursing you and cow business is happening, but <laughs> nothing else is happening. <laughs> so, these things have unfortunately happened because modern societies have… are becoming more and more superficial by the day more and more superficial by the day, for which we'll pay a price, here and hereafter. In both we will pay a very big price because we are becoming extremely superficial with the life process. All those things we should not have business have become business, isn't it? See, there are a few things we should never be commercialized. Education, health, spiritual process. These three things should never be commercialized. Once these three things are commercialized, that society is heading down. It may take some time, but it will head down. We are picking that up in India in a big way now. So we will see an economic boom because cow business will happen a lot for some time and then we will head down. There is no other way. So a few things should be kept off commerce. It's extremely important. That is why we are looking for volunteers all the time. So the dedicated people conduct certain things, not people who are looking for livelihood. The next question is from Ramya. Namaskaram Sadhguru. How does raising energies through Kriya help in working out the prarabdha? Sadhguru, in close. This is what I was talking about some time ago. See, uh, <laughs> people's idea of civilization or so culture or socially, what to say, uh, a compromised behavior, they think they must be neutral about everything. This happened. You heard of… I'm getting into political trouble. You heard of Babri Devi government, hmm? Bihar. Babri Devi was the chief minister for a f few years. It was considered the most or perfectly neutral government because it did not even interfere in its own affairs. <laughs> so people are becoming like this 
Now if we raise energy, different people will behave differently. Some will become still, some will shake, some will roll, some will crawl, some will scream. Some will open their eyes like that, some cannot open their eyes, all kinds of things. Because uh, when extra energy is pumped into something, depending upon where that machine is right now, in what kind of condition, what kind of issues, they have, this is a complex machine, it's not like a simple automobile or something. It's a very complex machine, it will behave differently. But if all this is being judged, best thing is not to raise energies, keep everybody low. Prarabdha, you suffer, what to do? Because <laughs> because if everything that happens on one space is being judged in another space, then you can't do anything significant. So prarabdha means it is your allotted karma. How much allotment you choose itself, it's not a conscious choice, but it's a choice. How much allotment your life chooses is dependent upon how vibrant your energy is. If your energy is a very effervescent and vibrant, you naturally choose more prarabdha, because you know you can handle it. It is not a conscious knowing that I can handle it, Life knows, life has its own intelligence. Depending on the effervescence of your thing, this is why it's very important you don't teach a damn thing to your child. Just play, run, jump around, laugh, scream. Because life energy has to become effervescent. When if it becomes very effervescent, it will naturally download a huge volume of prarabdha. Is that not trouble? Yes, it is. But either you can store your trouble in the storehouse for it to explode in your face sometime, or you can download it and handle it. There are two ways. Anyway, it's there. You can't get rid of it, it is there. Either you bring it in and handle it, or when it falls upon you, it looks like the whole universe has turned against you, God has turned against you, creation has turned against you. People are always going through this because prarabdha download happened without them asking for it. <laughs> now being on the spiritual path means, you want the whole warehouse, I want to see what is in the warehouse. I am not interested in just dealing with my retail business. What is in my retail shop? Let me finish that stock, that is not my way. I want to finish off the warehouse. I want to set fire to the warehouse. If you want to do that, you need lots of energy. But now you are talking about setting fire to the retail shop, not even setting fire, selling off your stock. How will it help? Well, if energies are intense, it will burn out quickly. But you must know this, if you do not consciously welcome new downloads of prarabdha, which is naturally fixed into the spiritual process, nobody, if they are... if they are teaching you something or you are... or you are a <laughs> book yogi, Reading a book, you're spiritual, that's different. If anything has been transmitted to you, always this is there that if you're running out of prarabdha, new prarabdha will come. <laughs> many people who are here around me, they keep wondering why when I'm around Sadhguru, so many troubles. <laughs> because that's how it is, because I want you to understand what you're calling as prarabdha is a certain amount of software. If you use up the software, what you should have used in hundred years, suppose you use it up in thirty years' time, that means you will die at thirty. You need to understand this. This is why most yogis burnt up their karma so fast, between thirty and thirty-five a whole lot of people have died. Just look back and see in the history, 
So many well-known yogis all left their bodies at that time because they burnt up everything and they had no business with the world, so they left. So, the spiritual process is always calibrated in such a way that we put a hole in your warehouse, always. If you think you solved one problem, the next dimension of problems are always trickling into your life all the time. <laughs> they should be, otherwise you will run out of your software. If you run out of software, even if your hardware is good, you ran out of software, this is becomes nothing. So it is important that we are aimed towards the sanchita or the warehouse, not just the prarabdha. So these words you picked up from the books here, there or maybe even I've used these words sometime. So uh, troubles anyway, we are uh, coming out with a book called Karma Sutras being published by Random House in United States will come out in the month of February 2021. Virus, post-virus, you know. Because virus is our prarabdha, it's not our sanchita. We want to burn it up and then <laughs> do the rest. So this is called as karma sutras uh, because there are simple fundamental rules as to how to handle your karma. Don't pick up vocabulary which could confuse you. You clearly understand this. It is only because you have a certain amount of conscious and unconscious memory, you are able to function, isn't it? Now when we say prarabdha, we are talking about that dimension of memory, which is right now on within you, making you the kind of person that you are, making you do many things that you're doing, your talents, your capabilities, your incapabilities, your fears, your anxieties, everything is because of your prarabdha. If you burn this up, when you come to a certain point, it may feel like absolute freedom because your fears are gone, your anxieties are gone, this is gone. Many of you have gone through these phases. I shouldn't be talking to you like this, I should speak this only in the Sadhguru in close. But I, you know, I'm like this. I don't know where I'm in close, where I'm out close. <laughs> I'm always in close, this is the problem. Anyway, the video department will decide what is in close, what is out close from now on <laughs> So, people around me are always experiencing this, that uh, a time will come, their sadhana is, you know, reaching a place, suddenly they become very peaceful, very nice, healthy and well. Suddenly unexplained levels of struggles and problems all of a sudden. What happened? My spiritual has fa spirituality has failed, Sad Sadhguru has ditched me <laughs> All kinds of things. No, no, it is just that uh, because we saw you're handling your software comfortably, next download happened. <laughs> Why should we call it a download? Let's call it upgrade. <laughs> software upgrade happened. It became more complex. <laughs> Any upgrade is more complex than the existing software, isn't it? Do I understand correct? It's more complex. So, a soft grade, a software upgrade happened. So now you're confused, you think Sadhguru ditched you or you're suddenly this process is not working, you must go somewhere else and learn something else. You idiot, it's working <laughs> What to do? So, don't think of all that, there are simple aspects of life. You don't need any other teaching, believe me. There is a simple process, all of you have gone through, who are here at least, inner engineering. There are five significant aspects in inner engineering and there is a practice. These five aspects, every day, you live it, every moment. You live these five aspects, 
and practice, what you're doing there is fine. But if you want something more in terms of health, well-being, you want to transmit something in your life, then we will teach you other kinds of practices. We can upgrade the practice a little bit. But in terms of fundamental approach to how you approach yourself, these five things are enough. There is no need for one more teaching, one more teaching, one more teaching. Because you didn't get those five things, I'm continuously talking. Yes? Five aspects are there. I will make this much simpler in the in-close, because now if I make it, many of you will give up doing what you're doing and try to do dumb things. <laughs> it is much simpler than five things actually. But five things in engineering is a simple, very simple program. There are five aspects, you figure it out what these five are and make it a living reality for you, everything will change. Everything will change, it does not mean everything is gone, no, no, no. You becoming more competent to handle all this nonsense, your nonsense, all right? It's your stuff. If it's happening within you, it must be yours, isn't it? Hello? It's happening within you, it must be yours. No, no, because somebody will tell you, you immediately say, because you think Sadhguru has ditched you, you go and visit an astrologer, he tells you this uh, planet is spinning too fast. <laughs> this is happening, that is happening, this force is happening, then you go to the next black magic, magic man, he says, somebody has done something to you, we will do the pujas for you, endlessly it will go on. I'm telling you, all these things may have some influences. Somebody does some black magic on you, maybe some influence, maybe the planetary positions are in a certain way, some influence. But these five things I'm talking about in the basic program of inner engineering, if this becomes a living reality, the planets can spin whichever way they want. Anybody can do not just black, blue, yellow, red magic also they can do. They can do whatever kind of magic, this will be fine. This will become independent of all that, that's what it means. Please make it happen for yourself. So.